It is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Why do we even listen to him? And people are on the streets. You talk to them, they are baffled, they are bewildered. I'm deeply disappointed in him as a person. Should we be ready for something really crazy from him? Hi, I'm Greg Gutfeld. Thank you for not watching American Ninja Warrior. Tonight on the show, the crowd turns on Trump over what he said about John McCain. Are the poll numbers going to turn on him, too? I wonder. The Pope, was he wrong to call out capitalism? Yes. I'll debate that with Father Jonathan Morris and leave him a defeated husk of a man. And later, true detective, why this season stinks and you should just quit now before causing yourself any further pain. But first, you had me at Muhammad. Muhammad Youssef Abdulaziz was the dead fiend who murdered five servicemen in Chattanooga. This happened after the son of a Boston police captain was arrested on July 4th, planning an ISIS-inspired attack on our turf. The punk's apartment was full of bomb supplies and jihadi crap. He goes by the name of Abu Ali Al-Amriki. Maybe he's a genie. And just weeks ago, British stink bomb in a man bun, Russell Brand, blamed the Tunisian terror attack that killed dozens, not on terrorists, but on Britain. Medically speaking, he's an <laughs> But all this makes me wonder about terrorist spread as it relates to its apologists. For the West is not just fighting terrorists, but those like Brand who create a romantic narrative for them. ISIS gets free PR from those at a safe distance from ISIS. For the farther you are from evil, the more likely you'll dig it. So what's our response to those who build evil's case? We report, but we don't counter. Instead, our media suffers from ABIS, or anything but Islam syndrome. One symptom, asking moronic questions. Were guns a big part of activity, social or other activity? Was what? What about guns? What, did, he, did he hunt? Did he shoot? Um, I mean, was that just part of small town Tennessee activity? Um, actually, he wasn't one of the guys that I ever heard about, you know, going hunting or he wasn't really that kind of guy, but he also didn't really tell a lot of people about his personal life. Anything but Islam syndrome. It's so infectious, it presents itself before the victims are even buried. The majority of these domestic terrorism incidences are actually not uh, Islam or Muslim related. They're actually white supremacy, at least according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Thank you for that. And let's be clear, not everyone launching terror attacks named Muhammad is actually Muslim. I know that uh, th what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. We know that it's an Arabic name. We don't know what this individual was believing in, and that's what they're going to be trying to determine. And so, of course, we hear stories that explain the shooter as families of five young men bury the victims. Their killer was young, good-looking, affable. He was a boxer. We know his story, but not ours. In the past, we didn't need a story to explain America or ourselves. The success spoke for itself. Now an industry of self-loathing, from campus to media to entertainment, subverts patriotism, egged on by a White House that finds such nationalistic language hurtful. Identity is only to be lauded if it's yours, but not ours. So how can you fight for your country when you find your country at fault? You can't. Until we rediscover our will and our way, our story won't have a happy ending, just a bloody one. Period. Joining me to discuss this and other things is a man so tough he flosses with barbed wire. It's retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer. He's a CIA-trained intel operative and senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research. So, Tony, hey, here's the thing that sure. disturbs me about ISIS. This is a death cult that has better PR than America. It's like as if Charlie Manson uh, was represented by Donald Draper. Doesn't it, it is. is. I mean, it's just a new thing. Well, no, no. I mean, it, this is uh, the president recently said uh, these were un uh, unfortunate circumstances. Gee, I, I don't remember anybody saying the Nazi occupation of Europe was an unfortunate circumstance. It was something to be dealt with. And, and this this passive language the president use, uses continues to embolden these folks. Uh, language, you know, the president is all worried about the symbology of uh, regarding the the uh, Confederate flag and all this other stuff. He's right in the sense that symbols mean something. And there's two things he's continuing. To to fail to do. First, you've got to define the enemy for who they are, radical Islam. Secondly, you have to actually 
put yourself forward to show that you're a force to be reckoned with instead of a force that continues to basically say, you know, we just if we're just a little bit more kind to you, you'll probably understand we mean you no harm. He doesn't get it, Greg. He doesn't understand that these people are out to kill not only our way of life, and if, if, if not us. And then if you don't subjugate yourself, uh, th then you are subhuman and you're going to be enslaved to do their bidding. It's totally insane and beyond any realm of understanding that I'm aware of regarding it being an intelligence analyst, intelligence officer. Yeah, here's what I, my, my big question to you is how do we sure. counter this message? I, I feel like, and it's not just the White <laughs> House fault, it's almost, it's so we, are, we as a country are so ambivalent about who we are that we don't bother actually defending ourselves against these, this kind of new radical movement, just from a rhetorical to point of view. Well, three things. First, uh, ISIS stands for everything we don't stand for. Uh, they're trying to subjugate people who don't believe the way they do. That's First Amendment, freedom of, of, of religion, freedom of speech. They're trying to subjugate, for goodness sake, women. I mean, Greg, you know, the president puts himself out there, as do the liberal side, about how they, they defend the women, this war on women. Well, my goodness sake, ISIS has a war on women. They rape them. They do everything they can to make them chattel. And third, uh, you know, we just had this big battle about gay marriage. Gays are thrown off of buildings to their deaths. So, if nothing else, stand on the principles for which we as a nation uh, have, have defined as, as what we believe is part, part of a liberal democracy. Secondly, on the military side, Ralph and I were, were, were talking earlier this week, uh, over the weekend, about the fact that you must go after their leadership, ISIS leadership, with impunity. Colonel, before I move on to the panel, sure. uh, who's Ralph? You Ralph mentioned Peters, you were sorry. talking to Ralph. <laughs> Ralph Peters. Sorry, oh. Ralph, I forget. Ralph Peters. Oh, Colonel, okay. Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Was this sorry. some guy at the deli? You were talking to Ralph? <laughs> and I'm going like, yeah, Ralph, I've never had a guest go. I was talking friend, to Ralph. And Ralph told friend. me. But it was interesting. He's, he's right here behind me. Yes. I love Ralph Peters. He's a great guy. All right. Yes. Uh, I want to bring in our guest here in studio. She's as tough as nails and not the Lee press on kind. I mean, right. the roofing kind that'll tear your hands off. It's Amber Smith, former helicopter pilot and advisor for Concerned Veterans for America. And he's so bright, I use him to treat my seasonal affective disorder. It's author Michael Malice, interesting haircut and tie. And she just woke up and thinks she's on The View. It's Joanne Osachinsky. And over somewhere else in another room, she's so tart, grapefruit has her for breakfast. It's National Review reporter Catherine Timp. Okay, wh while I was talking to the colonel, Michael, I saw you shaking your head so much I thought you were having a fit. It's kind of a stroke. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't agree with his Hillary Clinton position. Let me put forward the conservative position because we've been through this dance before with the Cold War when we did have an empire that was trying to destroy us in our way of life and Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher defeated the Soviets without firing a single shot. Mm -hmm. So if your first priority in your order of business is genocide, I think we could do other things before killing everyone mm -hmm. and we don't have to be bombing people in order to persuade him. Look, if the president can't persuade half of America to agree with him, how is he going to be persuading people in Iraq and in Syria? Mm -hmm. Amber, what do you think of this clearly a communist on our seat on our <laughs> exactly. Red. no my thing is as to what you said why do we not have our own propaganda mm. pr machine going on our side and what i'm sick and tired of seeing out of the mainstream media is them almost doing uh, ISIS propaganda for them when they refuse to acknowledge it as radical Islamic terrorism when they are refused to say that this shooter that just killed five Marines is Muslim like that's an absolute joke can we quit saying these poor terrorists and making excuses for them as they were they had a bad upbringing or a bad childhood and they're poor and they don't have jobs maybe that's why they're terrorists they're terrorists because they're bloodthirsty barbarians and they are pure evil that's mm -hmm. why they're terrorists uh, so basically she's implying that you don't think they're evil speaking on behalf of pure evil <laughs> let me just say this in the same way that we can give advice to women like don't get drunk and don't go down the alleyway you're not absolving any rapist from assaulting her they're still evil people mm -hmm. there are still things america can do that's not, and, and our allies can do that's not going to visit homicide on us not not every bloodthirsty barbarian is suicidal. I don't think not acknowledging the problem and continuing to push this sort of passive society as then we're just going to sit back while our American <laughs> servicemen and women are getting slaughtered the, every and day. they can't defend themselves to do so. Yeah, they are not allowed to arm themselves on any sort of U.S. military installation. That's an interesting point. I want to bring Joanne in this. It drives me crazy is that the fact that we're sitting in a nice air-conditioned studio, we can say whatever we want about gun control because we're surrounded by guys with guns, mm -hmm. whereas these recruitment offices and these military installations, they're sitting ducks, which is what we saw. Uh, yeah. um.
I mean, it's definitely something that I think our administration needs to look at, and our administration also just needs to work on the words they're using. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton said recently, uh, senseless act of violence. Mm -hmm. You know, we're using domestic terrorism. But the thing is, it's not senseless to the people who did it. There was a, a very specific reason for them doing what they did. Mm -hmm. It is an ideology that is now really infiltrating the country. And, and we need to call it what it is, like Amber said, in order for us to really begin solving the problem. Yeah. It's interesting to me, too, that some horrific criminals are more uh, indicative of a societal problem uh, than others. Uh, one might represent a broader racist culture after they commit a crime. However, one could be a lone wolf, an aberration. And you notice the media chooses what a lone, what a lone wolf is and what isn't a lone wolf. And I find that equally disturbing. All right, this is a big story. We gotta take a break. Did Donald Trump blow his presidential bid with his comments about John McCain? We're gonna talk about it a lot next. Don't go, stay. And now it's time for our weekly Bucket of Trump. This week, like a mob witness floating in the East River, Donald Trump rose to the top of the polls among GOP candidates, reportedly drew a crowd of 15,000 in Arizona. But then Arizona Senator John McCain called that crowd a bunch of crazies. And so Donald Trump did his thing when asked about John McCain this weekend in Iowa. Frank, Frank, let me get hero. to it. He he's hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years he's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Do you he's agree with that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? You can have, and I believe perhaps he's a war hero, but, but right now he said some very bad things about a lot of people. GOP candidates condemned Trump's remark on Twitter so fast they almost broke the sound barrier. Shortly after the firestorm started, Trump tweeted, Captured or not, all our soldiers are heroes. All right, I'm back with Colonel Schaefer, Amber Smith, Michael Malice, Joanne, and Kat. And we're now adding the oddly bearded comedian, Joe DeVito. How's it going, Joe? Thanks, Greg. It's nice to be the tallest person on the panel. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. All right, um, I wanted to go to the veterans first to talk about what Trump had to say. But I wanted to actually instead, let's go to Joanne because you'll be his future ex-wife. Yeah. Did he just destroy yeah. his chances? I think so. Here's the thing. The one thing I love more than alimony payments uh, is supporting our veterans. Yes. And he, he didn't. Mm -hmm. It's really awful. And after coming off of Obama, who people have, have said, I feel like he doesn't really support our military that much, he has never said anything like this. Mm -hmm. And we cannot have a president who says something like this, even if he backtracks, because it's out there. It's like almost a Comedy Central roast insult. Like, <laughs> like he could say, like if, John, if, if, if if Senator McCain was being roasted on Comedy Central, that would be the joke that Jeffrey Ross would write. It's like, you're only a hero because you were captured. But you don't say it because he's a, he is a hero. Uh, Colonel Schaefer, uh, yeah. uh, you're obviously you're a veteran. Uh, what do you make of this? What is, what's your initial response? Well, look, uh, John McCain actually was on a fire team fighting a fire in the forest on 67, putting his life on the line, besides, you know, shooting off aircraft carriers, going into a zone which was actually full of megs and getting shot down. And when I first met him, Greg, it was in 03 in Afghanistan, and we were still in an area of Afghanistan drawing fire. So uh, by all measures that I'm aware of, he's a hero. Amber, uh, you're a helicopter pilot. You were in Afghanistan and Iraq, am I right? I was. Uh, how do you think the troops are going to handle this kind of comment from, uh, from Donald Trump? By the way, on Facebook, he says he's a huge supporter of uh, veterans, and he, you know, he feels that McCain's let veterans down with the VA, and, all, and he's been disrespectful to his crowd, blah, blah, blah. No, uh, this was pure ego right here. That's all that it was. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you think about John McCain's political career and what he's done. Uh, he was a prisoner of war for five years mm -hmm. in Vietnam. He's an American hero. He selflessly served his country honorably. And so for Donald Trump to come out and say that he could have taken the higher road and said exactly what I just said, but instead he decided to go after him for his service to his country. Uh, and to me, all that shows is how Donald Trump really feels about America's veterans and our current military. And to me, um, that's not commander-in-chief material. You know, it's interesting, uh, Joe. He, I, I believe he defended John Kerry when people were going after his military service, saying that shouldn't even be discussed. And then he does this with McCain. Uh, do, you think it, do you think it's just because Trump has absolutely no filter? Or I mean, yeah. but that is kind of a problem. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think it's not just that he has no filter, but he exists in, in a universe where there's Donald Trump and then everything else. Yes. So he doesn't really relate to anything that's not Donald Trump too well. And if he's so worried about who's taken prisoner during a war, maybe he shouldn't use photos of Nazi, marching Nazis in one of his uh, promotional materials there. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's such a big deal. Yeah, he's, um, he, this just goes shows he's not ready for prime time in anything where he's not, comp he's not going to be in charge of, of the galaxy. He's, it's time, it, the fun show is over. The fun show is yeah. over. Let's show that again if we can. Frank, Frank, let me get hero. to it. He's he hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war PSW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. <laughs> Do you He's agree with hero. that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? You can have, and I believe perhaps he's a war hero, but, but right now he said some very bad things about a lot of people. So, uh, Michael, it, it reminds me of like when a comedian steps over the line and you just lose the crowd. Yeah, the, the term for people who are in a country they shouldn't be that don't get captured is illegal immigrant. So I'm glad that Trump has flipped flopped back again to his original <laughs> position to defending them. Trump, I think, is terrified that he's actually leading in the polls because he just wants to be on TV and he doesn't actually want to send the Oval Office, which would be a step down from his mansion. Yeah, by the way, he might not get... I thought he was going to get a TV show after this, but maybe he might not. Uh, Catherine, um... Isn't this? Ba I have a theory that this has something to do with D Donald Trump. Whenever anybody criticizes him, he takes it as disloyalty, and you and so he surrounds himself with sycophants that always agree with him, and then he ends up in this position. Does that make any sense? Well, that's exactly what I've been thinking is it sounds like everyone's done with Donald Trump and I'm kind of disappointed because there's one thing I really still want to know from him, which is how do you get that kind of delusional self-esteem, right? That must make life so fun. How would you ever be sad? I would love to walk around feeling so good about myself that I thought that I could make fun of or slam someone saying they're not good enough of a war veteran because they were captured when the only battle I'd ever been involved in was one to sell the best tie. Yeah, well, it's, it's true. He had two student deferments. Uh, yeah. And ultimately declared ineligible, given a final 4F uh, deferment. Uh, yeah, no matter what happens to Trump, he's never going to be sad. And I think that he should change and become a therapist for people with low self-esteem and teach them how to believe in themselves at a delusional level so they can walk around smiling all the time. That's true. He could really, really help me out. Um, you know what? The thing is, uh, we always, we do, we're, we're kind of like, make, we're making fun of Trump because he's, we consider him less sophisticated than other politicians, but he really isn't. <laughs> he's, he might just be a little bit too honest and reckless, but I don't see how you can get out of this. But I think that that's what people originally liked about Trump when he first yeah. joined the race. Is they're like, oh, he's going to say what everybody else is thinking, and that's what we like about him is he tells it like it is. But don't go after America's <laughs> veterans. Like, how like dumb do you have to be? That is political suicide right there. Yeah. By the way, uh, we taped this show. Uh, what time did we tape this? About Saturday evening. So a lot. There might have been some changes since then. So if this sounds remarkably dated, it's because it is because that's what happens when you tape a show. Uh, the RNC statement, if I can read it without my glasses, Senator McCain is an American hero because he served his country and sacrificed more than most can imagine, period. There is no place in our party or our country for comments that disparage those who have served honorably. I take this as meaning Donald Trump finally gave the RNC the open door to go in and yep. say, enough. Yeah, they were, We've had your fun. They were desperate to have a hammer to, to whack this mole for weeks, and yeah. they didn't know how to come out against him because of these 15,000 people crowds that he's drawing, yeah. and now they have that weapon. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see hardcore conservatives defending this guy when there'd be no way they would defend Hillary Clinton if she said this, or Bernie Sanders if they said this, or anybody from Occupy Wall Street. If you feel that this is an awful statement made by them, then you cannot walk away from this and saying, oh, it's no big deal. All right, coming up, why you're wasting your time with True Detective. Time for tonight's debate, or what I like to call... You're about to lose. The rules are simple. It's my show, so I win the debate, and they lose. You want to win? Get your own show, okay? Tonight's issue, Pope Francis says capitalism is the dung of the devil and keeps people in poverty. I disagree. I say capitalism has done more to end poverty than the Vatican. Thanks to capitalism, lifespans have climbed and food per capita has never been higher. Yet the Pope tells us that our materialism is destroying the planet. Pope Francis wouldn't come here to debate me. He was busy. So in his place is Fox News contributor 
Father Jonathan Morse, good friend of mine. So, Father Jonathan, uh, I understand I'm talking about your boss, which is uncomfortable, but he's been railing against capitalism, progress, technology, when it's given millions hope and dinner. The, the Pope did not come... The reason why the Pope Francis did not come tonight for this yes. was not because he was busy, but he was terrified. Yeah, he should of, be. Uh, of you. Yes. Greg. Yes. And uh, he knew that I don't mind losing. Yes. Right? Because I'm humble. Yes. And therefore that I would come in his place. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Greg, let me tell you. First of all, Pope, the Pope did not say the, that capitalism mm -hmm. is dung of the devil. Mm -hmm. What he said is love of money, which sounds a lot like the gospel, mm -hmm. which means when we say, the money when yes. we say that the, uh, that that profit mm -hmm. is going to be the uh, demanding right. like force in our lives well then yes that is going to destroy not only uh, society but our lives uh, personally but he's talking about 10 people father and everybody who is involved in capitalism is doing to in order to what, what, to what feed their families about? have you ever to feed met their anybody families? here at fox anybody in the media anybody in new york city calling them greedy no yes they're greedy yes. they're greedy because it they want to earn a salary they no, want not a salary but when we when we put money at this very center of our lives i think when we say that that is who i want to be that I is to be, you, know, you know what it is you watch too many movies father you watch too many oliver stone movies because people don't walk around and go I need money. What they're doing is, I want to go away with my family, so I want to get a raise. Or maybe I'd like to eat better, so maybe I should get a raise. Oh, I want to, that is great. I, oh, that is great. But that's what, but he smeared. No, but he didn't say capitalism yes. is the dung of the devil. Can I tell you what he did say? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, let me then I, will, then I will correct you, then I will lose. Yes, I will destroy you, Father. Yes. <laughs> um, the Pope, what you're saying is the Pope really opposes materialism and greed, which I think everybody... Uh, yes! Yes, okay, but that's not what he's... Breaking saying. news! No, Breaking he went, news. no, he went beyond that. He said, and this is his... I'm quoting him. He wanted to restrict progress and innovation... Uh, the period of irrational confidence in human abilities, meaning the fact that humans could create and innovate so much, kind of bothered him. He was talking about enlightenment. He did not like enlightenment because it somehow disconnected the church from the population. And also, then the worst thing, Father, the, quote. The, the, the worst, not, not a full quote. But, 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 Father, you know what else he did? And you yes. should hate this. Yes. Because he sensed that. He, uh, most human beings aren't scared of God anymore. He used green lingo, green rhetoric to scare them. He made it, in, instead about God, he made it, made it about the planet. That if you're ah, greedy, ah. if you're greedy, you're hurting the listen, planet. Come right. on. Listen, I'm an American. Are you I, really? I would not, I would not, I would not use the same type of language that he, that he uses. But right. let me tell you, he's an Argentinian. That's and true. You know what? He is an Argentinian that is not used to capitalism. Right. But crony capitalism. True. Crony capitalism in which keeps the poor, poor, without opportunities to yes. become unlike social, rich. unlike crony socialism, one which has thing, killed millions, before killed lose, millions. One, one more thing before I lose. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pope Francis was asked very specifically, "Are you a communist?" Mm -hmm. Basically, what you're accusing him of. Right. Basically, right. And what he said was, he laughed and he said, "No." And then he said this. Communism has stolen from Christianity the banner of charity. In other words, right. Charity is a Christian thing. I, but capitalism has stolen it and said, you know what? No, Take money from the rich and give it to the you poor. You mean communism? Excuse me. Communism yes. has stolen the banner of charity and said, we're going to take money from the rich and give it to the poor. That's not Christianity. It's not charity. So he's just a socialist. But I want to move. I want uh, one more thing uh, before I move on. You have to admit his attack on air conditioning is quite hypocritical considering That's Italian Italians hate air conditioning not, not if it's not if it's protecting Vatican art no they're they're afraid they have it in the vet they have it at the Sistine Chapel in, they it, don't want Michael Angelo's David to sweat ask any Italian they will say if there's air conditioning you will get like it's bad for you you'll get like something uh, like a kink in your neck all right that's what gets Italians headaches. say right yeah, headaches. Get headaches all the sorts draft. of things all right well you know what you lost I lose. but I, uh, but before uh, I say that I won Let's go to a higher power for a final judgment. This is the man upstairs. Congratulations, Greg. You won the debate. Now stop doing that other thing we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. you lost. Like, in the end, you lost. Uh, maybe I did. Right? Because publicly, I didn't, God spoke to you. I didn't lose. I was just humiliated in yeah. front of my friends and family. <laughs> By the thing he was talking about was sleeping in. Had nothing to do with any other kind of weird behavior. Coming up, what happened to True Detective? And can it be saved? But first, a word from our sponsor.
Tonight's show is sponsored by dudes who wear wool hats in the summertime. Sure, it serves no functional purpose other than to make you look like a jerk and winter is several months away, but you do it anyway. Thanks, dudes who wear wool hats in the summertime. Dear HBO, I am writing to you about the latest season of True Detective. What the hell happened? I watched three and a half episodes, and it's as tedious as Charlie Rose popping a zit. It was slow and grim. Every character's miserable like a knitting circle of goths. I'd like my money back, and everyone involved in the show tarred and feathered. Here's why. Because not only does the show suck, it made me realize that I suck too. Or rather, that I'm a sucker, because True Detective exposed my silly need to complete things. Because I'm halfway through the thing, I feel like I gotta finish, even though I should be doing something better, like eating light bulbs. That's your real crime, HBO. Getting people to commit to a show so that stopping has the same feeling as giving up on something worthwhile, like piano lessons or kitty soccer. Na perna esquerda, ele está parado! Sai! Sai! Oh, wow. So, uh, we fear a sense of failure if we quit, or else those last three hours were a waste. But that is wrong. Think of it like driving the wrong way on a freeway. Turning around is not an admission of loss. It's a life-saving correction. So to sum it up, HBO, True Detective is bad, but I'm also bad for watching it, so I share in the blame. But you can make it up for me if you bring back Eastbound and Down. Period. The only person I know who watched this show besides me is Joanne. Uh, I watched it for this show. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The second season mm -hmm. is amazing. Matthew McConaughey is unrecognizable. <laughs> That's true. He, his character work, <laughs> growing that dark mustache. Yes. I'm all for it. Yes. I'm excited to continue watching. Mm -hmm. Father, do you watch any of this filth on HBO, or do you stick to the 700 Club? What's HBO? <laughs> HBO. Is that a tele... Yes. It's a channel? Yeah. I binge on confessions, mass, Italian food, not to be stereotypical. Uh, yes. But those are the type of things I binge on. That's right. Your life is a soap opera. You don't need to watch storylines. Exactly. You just listen to people's horrible I say, secrets. You, I, what I say is, huh? you think you're the worst in the world, but you're not. The yeah. guy right before you was just <laughs> like you. And yeah. The lady before him was exactly like the two of you. And then that guy goes, well, I came here with my family. That was my brother and my sister. Oh, yeah. Thank so you, I'm Father. Not, I'm not supposed to talk about the one before. Yeah. Actually. You can't talk oh, about the one, bef one before. I learned that when I pretended to be a priest for a few years. Joe, um, do you binge watch anything? Do you watch anything that you feel you must watch, even though it's terrible? Well, I, I also binge on confessions, too, because they, they're really not too particular about who wanders in the other side <laughs> of the group. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I like the I like the real crime shows, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like they go far enough. Like I I like that show, The First Forty Eight. Yes. But I'm actually pitching a new one. It's called The Last Forty Eight. It's uh, it's mostly paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like yeah. to watch cops staple, you get a real sense of closure. Oh, I love that clicking noise. I used to love cops just because of the sound of the utility belt as they ran. Yeah. <laughs> Something. It's, I believe it's an actual <laughs> fetish. <laughs> But I actually enjoy the sound of yeah. the of the jo I mean, the heavy breathing, the yeah. jostling. Something about I love the jostling. <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, do you watch anything other than shows about loud ties? It's not loud. It's this is Twin Peaks, baby. No, I binge watch Intervention with like a six pack, oh, yeah. and uh, I, I always root for the people not to go. Yeah. Uh, and watch the families cry. It's really yeah. fun. So I am the worst person, like you said. <laughs> the yeah. yeah. We should talk. Yeah. yeah. Right? Beyond health, I think. Yeah, you Portis are. Portis is a good time too. Uh, Catherine, anything to add to this ridiculous story? I watch Intervention too, but I always root for them to go to rehab. <laughs> you still get to see them cry first. Yes. You should ultimately want them to turn their lives around. Mm. No. You are a terrible you person. Catherine, I love that. That's exactly it. That's the point. We should, we should all want to turn our, our lives around and try to be better people. I like yeah, intervention. Father somebody, Jay. they're not on the couch, but there's somebody good here. Guy, before I move on, I love intervention when the person runs out and the family chases them down the street. <laughs> yeah. and you know, have to watch the film crew because they're usually about 50 pounds overweight. The film crew probably needs an intervention because they're always chain smoking somewhere. <laughs> And they're running with the camera, and then they stop and they yell and scream. And some of the addictions are amazing, like window cleaner. All right, before we go to break, window cleaner, by the way, don't do it. Today is National Ice Cream Day, which is completely useless information. But our in house millennials, Joanne Osuchinski and Catherine Timp, wanted to celebrate the holiday like true Americans, so I allowed it, mostly because it gets them away from me. Here's our latest edition of the Millennial Moment.
National Ice Cream Day. I love National Days. But you know what? I don't celebrate enough of them. Mm -mm. You know, people say millennials aren't patriotic. I think we should go celebrate all the National Days for July right now. Oh my god, yeah. That's a great for way to show our patriotism. For America. For America. Yeah. Let's uh, finish yes. these. Let's go. National Pet Photo Day. Oh, I got one better. I've got a nice drawing here of America's dog, Jasper. Dana Perino. She's good to me. Caesar okay. salad. You want some salad? Delicious. Mmm. Thank you, chicken. Eat it. I mean, I... it's fruit. It's good for you, right? Uh... Oh, it's so nice to be able to take a walk with you, Dad. It's very important for us to for us to walk together. That's very nice, yes. Let's do this. Let's do it. All right. Whew. Rat catchers. We got you. Miracle. Miracle. We got this. Miracle. Miracle. Yes. Six feet. You're right. Told ya. Love national holidays. Yeah, the best ones are where you get to drink. <laughs> Heck yeah. Cheers. Mm. You know what this tastes like? Mm. A creme brulee. It counts. Yeah. You think there's two, two drinks, for one. drinks that taste like lasagna? Do you have any drinks that taste like lasagna? A lot of booze. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I drink more scotch? It's good. Well, at least there's already is a merry-go-round in the bar right now for National Merry-Go-Round Day. Cat, no. You just have the spins. You have the spins. I, a little bit. I don't feel good. I don't either. Why did we do this? Well, at least we're patriotic. Yeah. And now it's time for Adventures of Captain Sensitive. When we last joined Captain Sensitive, he was battling his fierce arch enemy, the press corps. All had been status quo until a brave young warrior named Major Garrett, that is his real name, dared to rise and speak. Can you tell the country, sir, why you are content with all the fanfare around this deal to leave the conscience of this nation and the strength of this nation unaccounted for in relation to these four Americans? That's nonsense. And you should know better. Hmm. Captain Sensitive won't stand for that sort of abuse. And many agreed he shouldn't have to. Two. Put the question in that form. I was at home watching it going, wait a minute, you know, it, it, was, it was a little out of school. When you look at the language and the way it was loaded in this question, right. capitulation, are you content? Did you hang the Joint Chiefs of Staff out to dry? Uh, there are different ways to ask questions. There's a fine line, especially maybe I'm old school, standing in the East Room, uh, a fine line between asking a tough question and maybe crossing that line a little bit and being disrespectful. So I think that that happened there. Malice. Yes. Okay. I imagine it's, you watch the press just jump all over Major Garrett. Why would that be? Is it simply because he was wrong or because it was Obama and they love Obama? I have never been prouder of our president <laughs> because we all want him and we all want to ourselves at one point tell the press to sit down and shut the hell up. Can yeah. I say hell? Uh, so I think <laughs> I this was perfectly, that. I think it was perfectly warranted. And I'm glad that he kind of stood up for himself instead of being mealy mouthed like blah, no. blah, blah, blah. Yes. No. Yes. That was a very valid question. You it, know who didn't think it was nonsense? The families of these yeah. four Americans. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to be content with this decision because you are ultimately negotiating with the enemy with this deal. So if all the terms are then settled, those four Americans are a part of the terms. It's a part of the relationship. And I, couldn't so, agree, I couldn't agree more. He, he was thought, what Major Garrett was saying was that you're celebrating, mm -hmm. Mr. President. You're celebrating. Therefore. You have to have a certain contentment. How can you be content yes. when there are pris uh, prisoners right now who obviously don't deserve to be in prison mm -hmm. and whose families are in, in, in out, out, outrage? No, I, I think you're right. And this is what, what I find interesting, uh, Mr. DeVito, uh, besides your beard. <laughs> I think Major Garrett 
by using the word content was mm. genius because he was using the same kind of rhetorical device that the left uses on Republicans. They attacked your intent. It's like, uh, it's not that you were wrong in your decision, but you're probably kind of evil. Yeah. Garrett did that, and no one ever does that to Obama. Well, I mean, I think that was the major flaw there, was how, how dare he ask the president a question at a press conference. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen like that. And the president, I think, is so used to having everyone kiss up to him that that, something like that. What he said, was it, was it disrespectful? Did it cross the line? I don't think so. And even if it did, too bad. It's the most powerful man in the world who can't handle a question. Exactly, Kat. To me, if they're, the press in this are babies. Every day, conservatives are told how they hate the poor and how we want minorities to suffer. They always tell us that we're the bad guy. He got a tiny taste of it, and he's mad. He, he didn't seem mad. He seemed kind of like Trump style. You said I didn't handle this perfectly. Nonsense. <laughs> He's perfect. Who are their therapists? Yes. I, I actually believe this was orchestrated. It was oh. planned. Really? Yeah. That's Perhaps because, a false flag. That's I hear. Major Garrett used to work for Fox News. Exactly. And that's the conspiracy, which is obviously true. Mm -hmm. it, that's what they're already saying in the comment section. Yeah, contentment can't melt steel beams. That's true. By the way, you know, I've seen him at the pool. He definitely is Major Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, God. Princess Leia action figures. Should they be taken off the shelves? But first, let's check in with our live studio audience. Thank you for being here, everyone. Quick show of hands. How many of you would prefer to see me do the rest of the show shirtless? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I've got something to think about during the break, Joanne, and so do you. <laughs> Some parents are upset over a new Star Wars action figure from a movie more than three decades old. The toy features Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia character in the skimpy gold bikini with a chain around her neck. The box describes it as a slave outfit. Here's a dad discussing his daughter's reaction to the doll. Hey, like Dad, why does this doll have a chain around her neck? I don't have any answers. You know what I mean? I'm just like blown away looking at it. Huh. Told the outfit is from a 1983 film called Return of the Jetty. <laughs> uh, I've never seen it, so let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> Star Wars is awesome. <laughs> I have to catch that uh, when I get some free time. Uh, Joanne, you've never heard of this film. No. Um, are, could something from 1983 be appropriate then and not appropriate now? Um, I think it's definitely appropriate. It's still appropriate. Uh, our kids haven't seen the film. Mm -hmm. No, none of these little children have seen Star Wars, so they can't be offended by the doll. Ignorance is, in fact, bliss. <laughs> well, actually, Mal, she just endorsed slavery, didn't she? Yeah, well, Return the Jedi was... The <laughs> Return the Je Once again. Once Return again. The Return the Jedi was the Fifty Shades of Grey of its time. It yeah. taught young girls that a rich gangster can do whatever he wants with you, provided he's wealthy enough. That is so true. No how ugly he is, Ex like Jabba. Exactly. Uh, Joe, uh... Isn't there a solution to this? Just explain what the damn thing is about before you get outraged. Well, why do people have to explain things to children now? When I was young, <laughs> we were just told, yes. shut up and move along. That's true. It's, I'm not surprised this is a sexist action figure coming from a company called Hasbro. I don't, well, think, uh, I don't think has sister <laughs> or has a social conscience to fight the patriarchy would mm -hmm. make a, a sexist toy like that. Mm -hmm. it's not it should stuff. be has her has empowerment yeah or, uh, oh yes but then there's the transgender ben. element father ben. um is it is there a point here that it just seems weird it, it all it, all it has to be is appear weird this That's is a, this is a problem from about like for 0.001 percenters. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a church in the South Bronx. Right. <laughs> the poorest congressional district in the United States. Yes. Uh, trust me, nobody is outraged at my parish about this doll. Yes. They, they're, they're outraged about real-life problems. So. Well, this could be a real-life problem, especially if you are aroused by the doll, Catherine, which could be an issue. Uh, thoughts? Not on being aroused, but just on the doll in general. Star Wars people are kind of weird, people who are super into Star Wars. So I don't know. It's not really shocking to think that they might be into something like this. Who knows what they're into? Nobody really knows because nobody's really trying to hook up with those people. Well, here's my final Good thought try. because the show's almost over. And, and I, 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 the Princess Leia story is important because if you don't understand something, 
and it's confusing, have someone explain <laughs> it. Right. Yeah. Uh, you have, we all are born with these brains and these mouths, and we can all talk to each other. Don't just get angry. Have somebody explain it to you. Right. I have a lot of things explained to me every day. All right. I've had enough of everyone here. Thanks to Colonel Schaefer, Amber Smith, Michael Malice, Joe DeVito, Father Jonathan Morris, Joanne, Catherine, and uh, coming up, Lou Dobbs. I'm Greg Gutfeld, and I love you, America. Hey, Lou, what's going on? What do you want? Uh, well, I was just, uh, just checking uh, to see if he, I'm going away for a couple Greg, days. Greg, what do you want? I just, uh, I could use a little something, you know, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Something a little, maybe. What do you want? Uh, you want an ounce? An ounce would be a start. Yes, an ounce would be a start, but um, I'm, I'm maybe gone for like three days, so. Man, I'm in, what, what do you really need? Uh, two ounces. Two ounces. Yes, two ounces. All right, two ounces it is, but yeah. I'm telling you, this stuff stays with you. Well, I'll, I'll try to take my time with it and uh, uh, make it last. Excellent. You didn't get it from me. I promise I won't tell anybody. I'll say it was from Killmead. Fair deal. So thank you.